back today with another episode of Blowjob. As today, hopefully, we can get our first win of the season with the Cleveland Browns led by star quarterback known as Mr. David Blow. It's, it's Blau, and I'm not going to call it Blowjob, but that comment... That comment was too good not to be included. We did lose last episode with Mr. David Blau at the helm. 17-12 against the Tennessee Titans. You guys are unfamiliar with how this series works. I will leave a link to the full playlist in the description box below so you can go catch up. But simple enough, this is a one-year challenge set out by Mr. David Blau himself. A rookie quarterback with the Cleveland Browns set out and said if anybody out there can win the Super Bowl on all Madden and win the NFL MVP with him at the quarterback position, they'll win $250, which if we do get that, we will be given away to you guys. And hopefully through trades and building this team to be as good as possible around David Blau, we can somehow, some way, win the Super Bowl with the Browns and win the league MVP with David Blau, despite him being under 50 over all, being the lowest rated rookie quarterback this year in Madden 20. Now we have a lot of work to do because as you saw last episode, if it doesn't get better quick, there's no way we're gonna be able to complete this challenge. So today we're gonna be attempting a ton of trades as suggested by you guys. So hopefully today we can get our first one of the season this week out against Le'Veon Bell in the New York Jets. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. Y'all make sure to smash a huge thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe if you are new and turn on that notification bell if you have it. And guys, make sure to leave your trade suggestions in the comment section below to have a chance to be featured in the upcoming episodes. And once again, if your comment is featured, there's no guarantee your trade will be accepted, but it will be attempted. And today, dudes, the goal is to add at least two, maybe even three players to bolster this lineup. So hopefully we can get this first win of the season. Now, first of all, let's see what these messages are. First of all, we do have a message from Jannard Avery, left outside linebacker, says, Coach, you really let me play to my instincts recently, and I can't thank you enough. Last week was one of my best performances I've had since college. If I can put together another game like that against the Jets, it'll go a long way towards establishing me as a leader on this team. Now, our game day goal, hold the Jets to less than 250 total yards or get Jannard Avery, hopefully I'm saying his name right, one plus interceptions, forced fumble, tackle for loss, and sack. So he has to have either a huge game or we have to have a huge game as a team defensively. Now, next we have a message. Your DC wants to discuss the next opponent. X-Factor running that, which I'm obviously they're referring to Le'Veon Bell. This is our defensive coordinator. Stupid and mad, and they don't actually have the coordinators. Hopefully, in the next few years, they can have the coordinator's license, which will be fun. Maybe have a coaching care, so like, instead of late football. But anyways, he says, hey coach, what's the game plan for Le'Veon Bell? The guy is an absolute home run hitter. If we don't lock down our gaps, he's liable to score from anywhere on the field. How do you want to handle him? Just gonna slow him down. He says, we'll manage him as well as we can. I don't think we'll be able to shut him down completely, but I don't think we have to. We're gonna slow him down and think we can pull out the win. Yeah, I like that approach. We don't have to stop him. We just have to contain him. Let's do it. So beat the New York Jets. Hold them to one or fewer rushing touchdowns. Bet. I think we can get it done. Now with that said, time to attempt the first trade for today's episode and the first thing we are going to attempt and try and do is solidify this offensive line which was awful last episode we need new tackles maybe even a new center and the problem is we don't have a lot of cap space but there are players that we can ship on to shed a lot of our cap room. now first player we are going to try and get Kavon Battle with 131 thumbs up says, Get Marshall Yonda since he's so easy to get. And I know, I know Marshall Yonda is a player that's been a constant throughout all the trading type videos on my channel over the past few years, but it's literally no reason not to try and get the veteran to fill an offensive line position. He's a veteran, can help out this young offense, this young team. And he's a 91 overall, and he should be relatively easy to get, not only is he going to be easy to get and also help out this awful offensive line? He literally does not hurt our cap at all. So no matter who we add into this trade, we'll be shedding a little bit of cap. Now, what do the Ravens want? They want a center. 
Like, should we trade JC Treader straight up for Marciano and then replace him later on? And that will just shed 5 mil off our cap room? We'll possibly do that. See, Anthony Zatel, they don't want him. Maybe this is where we just throw in draft picks, although I do. Christian Kirksey. The thing with him, dude, he's 7 mil. He's worth 7 mil, and he's a 75 overall. I know he's a good player in real life, but in Madden terms, we're trying to make this team as good as possible for this first season so we can achieve all our goals. And with him being 75 overall and worth 7 mil, we can definitely probably replace him with somebody better, and unfortunately, they don't even want him. So that that's a complete fail, so disregard that completely. Now, what do we, I mean, do we just, what was our middle linebacker position? What can we, what can we do here? Do we have Matt Wilson or Joe Schobert? I don't want to trade either of those guys away. So, either it's probably going to be a draft pick. I'm not going to obviously trade away Baker Mayfield, because he's eventually going to be traded away, but for somebody really good. I'm not going to trade him away from Marshall Yonda. Now, I'm feeling like, I mean, Marshall Yonda could play center for us. So, there would be literally no, no repercussions to making this trade, aside from the fact, instead of, adding him to the offensive line right now to improve the tackle positions because we can convert offensive linemen around and it won't really affect us in Madden and it will be just replacing a player and gaining cap. It will be a much better player at the center position. Now JC Treader, they even they are interested in him. Now let's see if we can also squeeze out maybe a draft pick in this deal. I want to get as much as possible in return and it was declined. So I don't even know if this would go through straight up. I doubt it will. It was declined, but I do think if we add in like, oh, let's say maybe how many six, we have two six. A six round draft pick might be enough. It was declined again. So let's just see. A six round draft pick and a cornerback. Let's see if we can find a cornerback that is just a 61. Donnie Lewis Jr. Is this enough? It was declined again. So maybe we do have to add in like a fifth round draft pick from this year. To bring in Marciano, but I think that's worth it. Uh, we don't have a fifth round draft pick, so that's that's unfortunate. But a fifth round draft pick from next year, not enough to go through. That's unfortunate. How about how about a sixth round draft pick from next year, this year rather? That's not good enough. So maybe a fourth round draft pick from this year. We also try to squeeze out a seventh round. They don't have a seventh round draft pick. How about a sixth round draft pick from next year in this deal? What's the decline? Come on now. Still freaking decline, dude. I think, I do think a 7th round draft pick from next year will be enough to finally have this deal be accepted. You've got to be eaten out my butthole, dude. This is insane. Alright, how about this pick instead? It's a lot higher in the 7th round from next year. Finally. I know that seemed a little ignorant, but it worked. And we got Marshall Yonda for the minimum amount possible. So, we added a 91 overall right guard, a veteran, who will be probably converted to center, or somebody's going to be converted to center. We shed 5 mil of cap room here, but we also have to add in a 4th round draft pick from this year, and a 7th round draft pick from next year, which I will take 100%. Now, with that, we are going to try to bolster one more offensive line position in today's episode, and with 101 thumbs up, as suggested by Hero174, we are going to attempt and trade for a second year offensive lineman from the Indianapolis Colts who should develop into a 90 plus overall this season. And that is none other than Quentin Nelson, who I believe he, I know he was a top five pick last year. He probably, was he the third or fourth round, uh, overall pick last year? Something similar, but he is listed as a left guard. He's only worth one mil in cap room. He's an 87 overall. So once again, he can be converted to whatever position we do need. And also at the same time, we could shed some cap space if this is possible to be accepted. That, that was English. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, this is another opportunity. Maybe Christian Kirksey. They are interested in Christian Kirksey. Keep in mind, if we do trade away Christian Kirksey, we will have to have somebody to replace him. At the same time, I know he's a good player in real life, but for this franchise and what we need, this would be worth it. Would shed 7 mil in cap room, but at the same time, I just want to see if there's anybody else out there that could potentially be traded away instead. So, I don't want to trade away any of our middle linebackers. Christian Kirksey, Ray Ray Armstrong, obviously they're not going to be interested in him. Defensive tackle position, Trevon Coley, not interested in him, I don't blame them. The fullback position, who do we, we don't have any fullbacks on our roster, so it's basically going to be down to either draft picks 
or Christian Kirksey. Let's just see how close this deal is to being accepted. And that's extremely, extremely close for an 87 overall offensive lineman. And we'll also have our cap room now built up to 16.2 mil. We can have this get accepted. Now, the question is, what other draft picks do we do have to add in to make this deal possible? How about a second round draft pick from next year? Submit this through. It was accepted. Easy, just like that. Quentin Nelson is now a member of the Cleveland Browns. One of the best young offensive linemen in all of the NFL. And all it takes is a second round draft pick from next year. And Christian Kirksey, obviously, admittedly a very good linebacker who we will have to replace. So keep those in mind in the comment section below for suggesting future trades. But we have to trade him away, second round draft pick. We do get a player at a position that we really do need improvement at. But we do have to upgrade Christian Kirksey like ASAP. We might actually have to sign a free agent to replace him immediately, but we'll have to see. Especially with having to stop Le'Veon Bell this week. I mean, obviously, I don't want to have Ray Ray Armstrong instead, but we'll have to see where this goes. But we do have two players brought in already. And now, with that said, our last and final trade attempt. For today's episode, I have no idea if this is a possibility, but we're going to try our best because this would be a huge upgrade to our defense, which we do need, especially this episode, to stop Mr. Le'Veon Bell. The most thumbed up comment of the series yet with 480 thumbs up, Mr. Ben Katz says Luke Keekley is somewhat easy to get and the Panthers are interested in Vernon. Now, we'll see if that's actually a thing. So, the Carolina Panthers and Luke Keekley, once again, he's only worth 2.15 mil. So, with that being the case, it might be a little bit harder to get him this year as opposed to last year's Madden. Now, we did say he was they were interested in Olivier Vernon. Now, he's worth 15 point. 5 mil, which would pretty much give us the freedom to trade away for anybody that we want to the rest of this series, no matter what their cap pit is. Now, let's just see how close this is to going through. Guys, this might be a little bit harder than years past, but we're going to continue to attempt this. Now, they do need a cornerback, so how about TJ Carey? They don't want him. The problem is now that they don't have much cap room themselves. So, if we could throw in... They do need a left outside linebacker, Jannard Avery, who I don't want to have to trade away. Sion Takitaki, they don't want him. Um, how about a straight up swap? Joe Schobert, they kind of want him. But see, dudes, it's, let's just see the first round draft pick. We have the Miami Dolphins, which is now the three, third overall draft pick. We submit this through. I see, I don't think this is going to be possible, dudes. I think we could even trade away like Baker Mayfield in this deal, and it just would not be possible. See, dudes, this year it's so much different. I don't think we are going to be able to bring in Luke Keekly, unfortunately. And it's another episode where we don't get to add anybody. I think the only trade we've got thus far in this series is just offensive linemen. Now, let's see, maybe somebody aside from Olivier Vernon in this deal. But I don't want to... If we trade away a guy like Sheldon Richardson, I'm going to have to replace him with the free agent because we've already got rid of too many front seven players and we have to face Levy on Bill this upcoming week because they do need a defensive tackle. Don't I'm not gonna trade away Avery. Corner I mean they do want a cornerback. Is there any cornerbacks I'm willing to trade away right now? Terrence Mitchell, I'm not trading away Denzel Ward. Greedy Williams, I mean I know he's a, a young player. Do I try this? That's even lower than the others. How about Terrence Mitchell? Submit they're not even interested in him. I don't think this is possible dudes. I don't think it's a possibility to bring in Luke Keekley. I will try the Sheldon Richardson deal, but aside from that, if it's not accepted, we're going to have to deal with getting two offensive linemen in today's episode, which is not bad. We did need to improve the O-line, and it was decline as Luke Keekley is not going to be a Cleveland Brown. What I am going to actually do right now, dudes, is I'm going to try to trade away these three players and this guy like a 17-round draft pick in return and replace those three roster spots with free agents to temporarily help out our defense. Now, I mean, if I can just get a 7th-round draft pick right now, I'll take it. I mean, even if it's from next year, just anything, just basically get something in return for players going to cut anyway. And there we go. It was accepted. So now we have 17 mil to spend on temporary free agents that if they don't end up staying on our team, we can go out and trade them later. Now, there's not much left in free agency. Now, 
obviously we do need an outside linebacker for now because we did just trade away Christian Kirksey. Now, what's the best available outside linebacker? I think, I mean, Sha he, Shaquem Griffin is on our practice squad. Where did he even come from? I, honest to God, I, where did he come from? Where did he freaking come from? Well, uh, Shaquem Griffin is, is now on our active roster. Honest to God, dudes, I don't know where the heck that dude just came from, but I am not asking freaking questions. So that, that just happened. We can sign the best available cornerback, Akilo Witherspoon. I mean, it could it could help. I mean, he could help currently for depth because we'd only have a couple of, of solid cornerbacks. And we also do need a defensive tackle because nobody's good behind Sheldon Richardson. So currently we'll assign Andrew Billings to our active roster. As with that, dudes, I think we did just improve our team quite a bit. We're still at a 79 overall. I think we actually... We've dipped, but we do need to convert some of these offensive linemen first. So I converted Quentin Nelson to left tackle. He just dropped by one overall to 86. We still have Joel Batonio at left guard, 86 overall. We converted Marshall Yana to center. He's a 91 overall. He remains there. And right guard, we have Zach Martin. And at right tackle, we still have Chris Hubbard. So we do still need to improve our right tackle position. We can also trade away Chris Hubbard on later as we do replace that position because he's worth 6.4 mil in cap room. And with those changes, we are now up to an 81 overall. Now, I want to make sure that Shaquem Griffin starts at the outside linebacker position. That's crazy because I obviously did not sign him to my practice squad, but now he's a part of the active roster. And he is, I'm going to let him start at right outside linebacker. He's 91 speed. He's blazing. So maybe he's actually going to be an improvement from Christian Kirksey. With that said, dudes, that does it for the trade portion of today's episode. As we head into week number two, looking to get our first win of the season in MetLife Stadium, make sure to leave your trade suggestions in the comment section below for next episode. I mean, if we look at the team, the positions that we need to upgrade immediately is we definitely need to get a right tackle. We probably, I, I think we're good at running back. We probably need to add one or two more better wide receivers. I would not be opposed to adding in two better wide receivers and replacing Jarvis Landry with a better receiver if it took shipping him on to bring in like another 90 overall plus receiver. I think that's good on offense after that. Defensively, I still think obviously the strong safety position. I mean, middle linebacker, we still need to improve. Shaquem Griffin, he'd be good depth, but we still probably need a better starter. Maybe a better, we'll definitely need a better left end. I think we do end up need to ship on Olivia Vernon and one or two more cornerbacks. So keep that in mind when you are suggesting your trades for next episode. And with that said, dude, it's now time to head into week number two. And it is time to get our first one of the season and begin the campaign for David Blau's MVP race. Starting this game off on offense, just like last episode, try to start this game off with short passes to build some confidence for the future 2019 NFL MVP. Quick pass to Duke Johnson is overthrown. So not the most ideal start for Mr. David Blau. As let's stay out of the same formation. See if we can just, I just want a quick pass. Quick passes for a first down to start off this ball game. The underneath route is wide open. Jarvis Landry. Would, could have taken a block, you know, there from Kareem Hunt, but we'll take the eight yards, so it is a third down and two. As here, I think we're going to hand this ball off to Mr. Kareem Hunt and see if he can pick up two yards and keep these chains moving. Keep us from going three and out to open up this ball game. Kareem Hunt easily gets the first down. There he is. That's Odell Beckham Jr. First down and more in the plus territory. Let's keep on doing this, David. Keep this momentum up and get into this end zone in this opening drive. Come on, David. Need a good pass. Good pass. That's going to be a catch. Anthony Callaway. David Blau with a dime down the field. 28 yards into the New York Jets red zone. This is the David Blau that I expected to come out and light up the NFL first down. Looking to make it seven on this first drive. Going to hand this off. Kareem Hunt up the middle is going to pick up a solid seven yards. Keep in mind, we did not throw a touchdown pass in week number one. So we need to make up for that in week number two and hopefully have a multiple touchdown game here. Ratley in the slot. Quick slant. Catch. Ratley drops it. No, dudes. Third down and three. This time going to hand this football off to Duke Johnson. Just make sure we do pick up. Three yards here in the first down. Duke Johnson, actually, it's going to be a touchdown. We'll take it. Let's make sure we get this dub. The win's the most important thing. We take a 7 to nothing lead, and what a start offensively 
in this episode against the Jets. A better drive than what we had all of last episode combined as that is the start we like to see here. Have the New York Jets and Sam Donald held to a third down and six looking for a three and out. It's going to be a quick pass. Guess who it is? Shaquem Griffin. This is a poetry book. Shaquem Griffin. This is actually beautiful. This is what I like to call poetry in motion. Shaquem Griffin. What a guy. A pick six. As we pick off the young quarterback, Sam Donald, Shaquem Griffin, who we just literally signed off the practice squad to replace the outgoing Christian Kirksey, who was used in the trade to bring in Quentin Nelson, as he shows he needs to be a starter on this defense. This is absolutely insane, dude. That makes me so freaking happy as we do take a 14 to nothing lead over the Jets. Oh God, not good. That's Robbie Anderson, the Jet star receiver, with the first down in the plus territory. So it's not gonna be that easy all game long, obviously. Oh God, Le'Veon Bell is in open space here, picks up about nine. He's going nowhere, dude. Shaquem Griffin is a monster. He is monstrous. This dude is an absolute legend and is fighting for a starting spot here. Look at that sack, dude, slinging around. Sam Donald already at the sack in a pick six in this first quarter. Look at it, dude, what a man. What a monster. Third down and 10, they're gonna do a handoff. Le'Veon Bell, oh God, he's gonna get it, isn't he? He's gonna be just shy. As what a run from the superstar running back. As that might have just put the Jets in field goal range. They're gonna go for an extremely long field goal. Maybe we can get lucky. He'll miss, and maybe we can get our first block of this series as the kick is up. It is going to be how the heck? That's the ugliest free field goal I've ever seen in my life. So, not the most ideal situation here. Third down and eight. Let's be great. No interceptions. That's the main goal here. The comeback. That's supposed to be. Wasn't that supposed to be a comeback? Oh, I flipped the play, didn't I? That's my mistake. I thought that was supposed to be a comeback route. I flipped the play. That, that's all about incompetence and unawareness. I thought that comeback route was about to be ran perfectly and it was on the other side and I think that would have been open too. So I'm upset at myself. But it, it's not the worst mistake I could have made. Could have been a pick and it wasn't. What a punt. What a freaking punt here, dudes. This is what I like to call perfect round football. Shaquem Griffin again, dudes. This guy's having a superstar performance. Stop in the backfield. Looking to get a safety here. Hand off again. Le'Veon Bell this time breaks the tackle. Guess who it is again, dude? Shaquem Griffin busting in with the tackle as this sets up for a third down and 11. I'm going to bring pressure here. I want the two points. I want the safety. And I want the good field position ensuing after the safety. Come on, get to him. That's a sack. Yes! Avery, the man who was looking to have a huge game, gets the sack. Forces our first safety of the 2019 season as we get the two points and take a 16-3 lead. As this has been the absolute perfect start. Quick passes, quick passes. They're going to do. There's a flag that has to be offsides. It has to be. There's no way that was holding that quick. Offsides against the defense. The first down was picked up regardless. Jordan Jenkins, the culprit here. Just want to make sure no interceptions are thrown. Jarvis Landry on this post should be open. Oh, nice play there from C.J. Moses to back the ball down. I thought with him being on main coverage with C.J. Moses, go to break inside and be open. But unfortunately, he wasn't. Jets go and hurry up now, trying to make sure they get seven to end off this half. Oh, God. Oh, God. So many guys open. They're going to dump it off to Robbie Anderson. We missed a big hit as he is going to get tackled ultimately before the first down is made. Third down and four. I want to try and have a chance to get this ball back before the half and maybe have David Blau get his first clear touchdown pass. As the quick pass, he runs by the line of screen. It is going to be first down. Yes, Jameson Crowder with the touch as the Jets continue to move the chain. Oh, God, wide open. Jameson Crowder again first down. Now within the red zone at the 11. Be great, be great, be great, be great. Somebody do good things. Somebody get pressure. He's wide open. Touchdown, Jet. God dang. It's 
back down to a one possession ball. And against Robbie Anderson with a touchdown reception. Nice drive there from the Jets. Just couldn't get him off the field. As we are going to have 40 seconds to try and answer this touchdown grab. That was actually Quincy and Nunez with the touchdown catch. Not Robbie Anderson, but can David Blau do it in 40 seconds and have a chance to get his first passing touchdown of his career here before the end of the first half. The last thing we need to do here is turn the ball over and give him a chance to take the lead going into the second half. Odell Beckham should be open here. He is. He's going to hang on to this catch. Oh, I thought he was about to stay up. First down. A nice start there from David Blau. If we can at least get a field goal and take a two-possession lead going into halftime, I would take it. I'll take any points here, although obviously I do want to try and get David Blau's first career passing touchdown. A little screen pass here. This could be good. Cream Hunt has the blocks. Cream Hunt is going to take this one to the house. As that is history. David Blau's first career passing touchdown is to Kareem Hunt. Literally in three plays, in less than 20 seconds, the Browns go down the field and take a touchdown lead. Although, I mean, obviously that was all Kareem Hunt on the offensive line there. But we'll take it all day as we do make history. David Blau's first career passing touchdown as we do take a 23-10 to 10 lead going into halftime. Huge chance to get a three and out here to start off this second half. Third down and 14. Who's going to be the man to keep the Jets from picking up 14 yards? That's an awful pass, and that's going to be Terrence Mitchell with the catch. Our second interception of the ball game. As this team is straight up balling out today. Odell Beckham Jr. He's open. Odell, he is going to get into the end zone. What is going on here? David Blau's second consecutive touchdown pass in as many pass attempts. This one 41 yards to Odell Beckham Jr. That's Odell's first touchdown as a Cleveland Brown as maybe the David Blau experiment in this journey has finally began. We are going to go for two here trying to make this a three touchdown game. We're going to go for some slants, some quick slants. As the pass is going to be caught. Jarvis Landry, 31 to 10 ball game. This is insane, dude. Making me so freaking happy. Oh, God. Le'Veon Bell first down now within the 10 at the 7. We have limits to him to pretty much nothing today. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Big plays. What a hit there from Mac Wilson. The same Griffin flying there. As that does set up for a third down and goal. Let's just hold a field goal and keep this a three-possession ball game here. This is going to be a little dump off. Come on, Terrence Mitchell is going to keep him out of the end zone as we do hold them to a fourth down and goal at the three-yard line. Interested to see here. They are going to attempt this field goal as we are going to keep a three-possession lead as it looks like we are going to head into the fourth quarter with this being a 31-13 ball game. At this point, I pretty much think we got this dub wrapped up. We still want to try to pad these stats. Third down and one. I'm pretty sure everybody out there knows they're going to hand this ball off to Le'Veon Bell. For I lied to you. Come on. The stop. Oh, somehow Robbie Anderson makes that catch. It was decent coverage there for Mitchell, but the veteran receiver holds on. Third down and one. Hand off. Le'Veon Bell going nowhere. That's Mac Wilson. And I believe that is Denzel Ward to combine to combine for the tackle in the backfield as the Jets are going all out here for the touchdown. With only four minutes to go, dudes. Can we come up and get a huge fourth down stop right here? The quick pass. Let's go that time. Mitchell won the battle. As I thought Robbie Anderson was about to get another big catch, but finally the cornerback with the stop as that should be a GG and our first win of the season and the first win of Mr. David Blau's NFL career. As it is a third down and 17, not really sure what to expect here. What I do hope to expect is a nice dime here for Mr. David, although, okay, this could be big. This could be huge. Please don't be overthrown. I want to throw up. Throw up is coming out my mouth, dude. That could have been touchdown number three and an extra 70 yards on the stat line. But just that 50 overall rating isn't going to be perfect on every single throw. Just about two or three yards out of his range. As that might do it for his 
offensive performance today, but you can't complain. You can't complain at all. Oh, this could be another touchdown pass. Jarvis Landry on the run. Jarvis, he fumbled. Are you kidding me, Jarvis Landry? No. No. Dude, that could have been a setup and an opportunity for another touchdown pass from David Blau. He fumbled. That's our first turnover of the ball game. It was a nice throw from David Blau, but that's just unfortunate, isn't it? So we got the ball back, falling an interception, and I'm going to try this one final time. I just, I don't want this to be his first interception of the ball game. And we're just going to take off here. You know what? Throw this ball. Green Hunt, please make this catch. Somebody could have made that catch. Like 50 yards. But guys, a successful episode today as we do grab our first W of this season. 31 to 20 over the New York Jets in a pretty good performance from Mr. David Blau. For 200 passing yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Look at that. Look at that graphic. Got to freaking love it, dudes. As your Cleveland Browns now are 101 on this season. Final stats from today's game. David Blau, 16 to 25, a 120 quarterback rating. 232 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Sam Donald ended up throwing three interceptions. He had Le'Veon Bell end up with 90 yards and a touchdown. Cream Hunt, we didn't run the ball a lot, which is probably going to be a theme of this series. So we probably do need to maybe trade away two of our running backs to improve other positions because we're not really, like I said, going to utilize the running back a lot in receiving yard-wise. Our leader was Odell Beckham Jr., 89 yards with a touchdown reception. Defensively, total tackles goes to Joe Schobert, but Shaquem Griffin, I mean, I know he didn't have that many tackles, but what a game. His first game as a Brown, three tackles, a sack, a pick six. What a team, what a life. What a freaking series, dude, that we do improve to 101 on this season. As we do have three upgrades, unfortunately, David Blau is not one of them, but I'll take any point possible to improve this team. So Kim Griffin did have an upgrade himself, as we have a ton of messages here. View message, important win from Taylor Bennett. She has a comment. Congrats on the victory, coach. Early season wins are so important for momentum and team morale, and this was definitely one you can build on. Good luck, and we'll talk soon. We have a message here from Jannard Avery. I won't speak for anyone else on this team, but I'm pretty happy with my performance this season. You know how elite players always say, the game started to slow down for me. Yeah, I finally understand what that means. So, Jannard Avery now has the star development trait and progresses faster than before. So, that's another addition in the Madden 20 franchise as you'll be able to unlock development traits for players throughout the series. As he got a 10,000 XP boost, that has to be at least one upgrade for him as we have a message from our D coordinator. Man, Bell will not be denied his yards. I got fights and fights and fights of the team. But at the end of the day, we did our job. We got the win, and that's a huge weight off our shoulders as our defensive line got 300 XP boost to each player. As I do want to see if we do have an upgrade for Jannara Avery. He should after getting 10,000 XP. He has two upgrades, dudes. As we are going to upgrade, we'll do one to speed rusher one overall boost to that so he's now up to a 77 overall as a whole as we also did upgrade his power rusher archer type now that's up to a 74 overall unfortunately that didn't boost his pull overall but we'll take the two upgrades for the young linebacker because i think dudes that is going to do it for today's episode an extremely extremely successful episode we improved our offensive line and at the same time had a huge performance with our quarterback david blau as we also got a huge win to kick things off and hopefully propel us into a spectacular season and with hopefully what will be an mvp winner in quarterback david blau but guys that is going to do it for today's episode if you did enjoy make sure to smash that like button to let me know you are enjoying this series also let me know your trade suggestions in the comment section below for next episode it's gonna be a tough one at home against the la rams hopefully we can get our first win of the season in Cleveland. Subscribe if you are new. Turn on the notification bell if you haven't stopped missing any uploads of this series. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace.